Hello, in this video we are going to take a quick look at this calculus book. It is called Calculus for Scientists and Engineers. It is the early Transcendentals version and it was written by Briggs, Cochran, and Gillette, or maybe it's Gillette. This is a modern book. I think the copyright is like 2013. Um, so it's going to follow the outline that you would see in a college level course today. So if you were in a college taking calculus using another book, maybe like the one by Stewart or the one by Larson or maybe you're using the one by Briggs, this is going to go really well with what's taught in college today. Which also makes it a great choice for self-study if you're trying to like learn before you take a class. Like maybe you want to learn calculus before you actually take calculus in college so that when you show up in college, you're like a master and you already know calculus. That usually is a good strategy for any class. Like if you prepare ahead, you can become really, really good uh, before the class. I did that a few times, uh, once in a math class and once in a programming class, but that's it. Uh, it's very hard to do and you have to really want to do it. So if you really want to learn calculus, like if you have like a strong desire to learn math, then you can use a book like this to actually learn it. So let's take a look at the content so you can see what this one contains. And here it is. Yeah, 2013 Pearson Education. All right, let's take a look here at the contents so we can see what we have. This should have some Calc 1 content and Calc 2 content. It has a little bit of both, which I'll show you. So all this stuff here is Calc 1. Functions, limits, derivatives, all that's Calc 1 type stuff. Then we have application of the derivative, then we have integration, okay, this is all still Calc 1 stuff, applications of integration. So this here could be Calc 1 or 2, I've taught this in Calc 2 in college, um, and then integration techniques. This is also Calc 2 stuff, differential equations, usually Calc 1 perhaps, sometimes Calc 2. Perhaps series, this is calc 2, calc 2, parametric and polar curve calc 2. So you basically you have a calc 1 and calc 2 book combined, and you have some answers in the back of the book. So really useful. So you basically can't use this for like calculus 3. But if you have to take calc 1 or 2 or are taking it, um, great, great for that. And you can see it's very, very modern in the way it's written. Um, the colors, you can see this, it's not like the old books from the 60s. Um, so yeah, yeah. And, and it's not a perfect book, uh, it's, but it's a great book. And you can you see that, here's an example. You can see it does, it does work through the examples quite carefully and does try to do um, a good job. Let's see, so it goes through here and then just breaks it up. You just take the limit of each piece basically. Basically the rule here is you know if you can plug in the number and it makes sense, do it whenever you're taking limits. Or as long as you're not dividing by zero or taking the square root of negative numbers, um, you, can, you can do that. And the reason you can do that is by what's called continuity. But I think at this point in the book they, they are not there. Right? That's usually how it's not done. Uh, continuity is probably going to come up here, 2.6 you see. So yeah. But kind of a, a cool idea. Uh, calculus is a beautiful subject. Oh, here's, here's, here's a beautiful thing in calculus. Right here, check this out. This is cool. The limit of a function. Right? Let's, let's read this. Assume that f of x exists for all x in some open interval containing a, except possibly at a. We say that the limit of f of x as x approaches a is l, written that way. If for any number epsilon greater than zero, there is a corresponding number delta greater than zero such that and one way to read this is, okay, so you have the absolute value of f of x minus l less than epsilon. So you can think of this as the distance between f of x and l. So the distance uh, between f of x and l is less than epsilon whenever the distance between x and a is less than delta. So let's read that again. For any number epsilon, okay, so no, no matter what number you pick, no matter how small, you can find some delta. So if you can pick any delta, any epsilon, really, really small, doesn't matter how small it is, such that th you can make this distance as close as you want. So you can make it, you can make epsilon 0 0.01, or you can make it 0 0.001, or you can make it 0 0.00001, right? And 
And that would be a very, very <laughs> a small number, right? So they would be very, very close. And when you do that, what happens is there's a number delta such that, well, it, sh it shows you how close x has to be to a. So basically, the closer and closer you get to a, you know, you can, you know, f of x gets really, really close to l. That's the idea. And this is something you learn at the beginning of a Calculus 1 course, and it's actually very hard and confusing. Um, when I took Calculus 1, I did not understand it. I remember I copied from this guy. We did some group activity, and I thought it was horrible. And I was like, oh no, I don't know what's going on. And the next day we did something else, and everything was fine. That's because this is the only time you do it. If you become a math major and you study like advanced calculus or like real analysis, in that case, that's when you really, really start to go deeper into stuff like this. Like, you know, you spend, you know, an entire month working with sequences and a definition very similar to this one, typically at the beginning of an advanced calculus or undergraduate real analysis course. But yeah, you learn to appreciate it later, I think. Overall though, I think this is a good book uh, that you could use for self-study, you can see it has a lot of information. In the back of the book, let me show you the answers. You see it has answers to a lot of the problems. Most of the odds, pretty much all of the odds. Probably like 99% of the odds. A lot of times the books will have the odds, but they won't have like answers to other types of problems, um, like proofs and stuff like that. Some of the older books do, uh, but not all of the modern ones do, so yeah. Yeah, solid book here, solid book. Yeah, anyways, I'll leave a link in the description in case you want to check it out. Until next time, keep doing math.